No. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> it's not even your morning, silly monkey. <laughs> or afternoon, wherever you are. So it's um, Sheena Cantor, in case you didn't actually know that. You could be listening to us on a podcast, couldn't you? you so I'm Sheena Cantor, and we've got the wonderful, amazing Bobby Joe all the way from Alabama. Good morning. This is the Bobby Joe and Sheena show. <laughs> and today... We were having a discussion before we come on and it was about free will. And it's like, you know, what is free will? But let, let me read you something that I, that I found today from um, a guy called um, Jeff Foster. It may take a little while, but you're going to enjoy this. Imagine a game, the most amazing, mysterious and genius game ever devised. Everybody is playing it, but nobody knows they're playing it. Everybody has forgotten. There are no rules to this game except the rules that you play by. There is no goal except the goal you're aiming for. Nobody wins the game, but nobody loses either. The grand prize and the booby prize are the same, the game itself. There's no escape from the game. Even the attempt to escape the game is part of the game. And if anyone thinks they've escaped the game, well... That's part of the game too. If anyone thinks they understand the game or that they are an authority on the game or that they can teach you how to win the game, that's also part of the game. Everything that happens in the game is perfectly appropriate for the player. It seems as though the game was designed for you. That's part of the game. The game seems personal, but it's really totally universally universal. It's your game and yet everybody is playing the same game. This too is part of the game. As long as you're playing this game, you can't go wrong. Want to play? Sorry, you have no choice. You're already in the middle of it. The game is already being played. This game is life itself. And if you're reading this message, the game is already complete. This is the game talking to itself, reminding itself that it is complete. And now you are free to play. Isn't that, Bobby Joe, just so freaking wonderful? Yeah, I'm still wrapping my head around it. You've read it a few times. So you're like, oh, I absorbed this. This is great. <laughs> oh, I know when it was the first time I read it and I was just like, so remember whenever I was 16 and I sat in my, in my class with my friend and I turned around to her and I said, life is a game that everybody plays, but to mm -hmm. some it's no fun. That was the 16 year old Sheena. There's two phrases that's always stuck out for me in my life has been that one. And then the other one was just for the pure joy of it. And it dawned on me today when I read that, I went, there's my phrases. That's how I'm supposed to live. That's my game. It's a game and it's just for the joy. And we were talking before, and I'll let Bobby Joe talk in a minute. We were talking before about free will. And, you know, what is free will? But we were talking about how I used to be, probably still can be, a little bit of a know-it-all because I had all the knowledge and stuff like that, but not all the results. But I have certainly had all the knowledge. And, uh, well, whatever I knew anyway. And it just said, there is no, what is it? If anyone thinks they've escaped the game, if anyone thinks they understand the game and that they are an authority on the game or that they can teach you how to win the game, it's also just part of the game. So if you think you've got free will, you have. If you don't think you've got free will, you don't. What game do you want to play? I love mm -hmm. it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, I don't even know. I feel out of it this morning. Uh, belief. I just think it's whatever. Yeah, because it's all, all our own story. That goes a little. That can that can be a little heady going down that one. But it's all about our beliefs. What do you believe in, right? I used to have more fun, and I was a raft guide. I used to just live in the moment. Now I'm not. Now I'm all domestic, living in Alabama with Fred. I have so many chores. I feel like I'm always reacting. She know, I can talk about that. I'm so reactive to my senses. I sent you a Marco Polo on the way home last night during sunset. Just so much. So yeah, being domestic, I do not like this. I loved when I lived out of my truck. <laughs> I loved free will that way. It just every day was a beautiful day. Every day was a day to be enjoyed. And I still feel that way. But now it's like there's grocery shopping and animals to take care of and the house to take care of. And yeah, I told Fred, let's sell everything and just move into a small place. <laughs> <laughs> it, is it is all about your beliefs what's your journey here you know life fire friends you gotta work hard bob you gotta work hard for the money and i'm like how's that working for you huh how's your stress level you have a heart attack yet <laughs> so you know it's whatever your belief is mm. that's what you want and get into the joy of it i don't really have much to say free will trips me up free will to me i don't know i think a lot about this because i don't know what my free will is what is our expiration date 
Do I, does you have free will? So it takes you this way and you're going to die in your eighties or, Oh, Hey, back, back in your thirties, you had free will and you took this path. Now you're not going to die to your nineties because your trajectory took you that way. I have no idea on the whole thing of free will. That, well, that's one thing I have no subject about. I really don't. I don't, I'm not studied on it. I don't know. I know we have the choice and free will to do what we want, but what does that really even friggin' mean? I think it's not really just like you try to will. understand it. You can't understand it, can you? Because what we can understand is actually not true because it's just part of the game. So yeah. just even not understanding it is, I mean, one of the things I love here in the book of Neville Goddard, and he said, the question is often asked, what should be done between the assumption of the wish fulfilled and its realization? Nothing. Now, see, that that's what trips people up, isn't it? Because what you said, you said, I can just sit on my couch and do absolutely nothing. And I really, 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 truly believe that you could go and sit under a tree and think that you're rich. And if you totally believed it, I mean, totally, because that means every mm -hmm. single cell of your body is in alignment with that. Then the money, yeah. somebody would walk past and just drop a million pounds just right there for you and walk yes. on past. And that would be it. But most of us are caught up in the freaking coding that was done before. And we don't even know what the coding is until we see it out there outside of ourselves and it normally comes in, a, in another person and then we blame them but actually they're us pushed out and we just sort of go oh gosh yes I see myself now I see that now with one of my clients she's actually gone oh I just saw myself I saw myself yeah. in, the, in the in the cafe I saw somebody and I saw what they were doing and I went oh my goodness that's me so we, we can have another talk about this because this is going on. I'd like to read a little bit more of this, but I did some reading before that I wasn't intending on doing. But yeah, that's a that's a good one to think about. You know, what's your, tell you what, why don't we ask people, Bobby Joe, what's, what do you think about free will? You're free will to think about anything. So what's your definition of free will? What do you think about it? Yes, and we can let see what they comes question. back with. Well, you just said something there. What did you just read from the power of awareness? Um. What should be done between the, the assumption of the wish fulfilled and its realization? And the answer is nothing. Yeah, but see, you're you're taking it to a whole new level. I'm thinking of my mother-in-law says so she listens to us and she's probably like, what do you mean I'm seeing a reflection of myself? <laughs> I mean, I can just hear her being like, what does that even mean? It just means like someone pulls out in front of you and it pisses you off and you're driving. I bet you that's something that you do all the time. You know, we're doing our little pumpkin patch at a really busy corner and I hear people all the time beeping at each other and it's like the impatienceness, but I bet you they're the ones who do the thing. So everything's a reflection. If something bugs you in somebody, it's taking a pause at a moment and, and thinking about it. So that was one thing you said, but you know, that whole assumption, getting back to you sitting underneath the tree, people don't get this part. And like, how would I be a millionaire sitting underneath the tree? Well, because everything that I keep studying and remember, I don't know if you've been listening this week, I'm taking a metaphysics class and this is everything that I'm reading about prayer and that we are all healthy but that there's a realization that we don't know the truth in our brain and so everything we're, we're in sickness and poverty but you know in the real thing there's no death we just transcend in the real thing in the realization in the truth there is no sickness and that is a hard one for everyone to wrap their head around and we could go on and after about it but that is the bottom line and you say you can't tell me that when my father died of cancer but that's it we don't die, we transcend. So first you have to understand who we really are as these energetic beings seeking this truth. But instead, no, we wanna eat bonbons and watch TV and reruns of Yellowstone, but that's your choice. But if you go deeper within, we're spiritual beings, that's the science. And that's what Sheena and I chase and love and we just absorb it, is that we are spiritual beings. This is only point, the, all that, you know, eating and the drinking and the partying and all this, you know, shopping and Louis Vuittons and, you know, Yellowstone, it's a big series here in the United States. You know, that's all the 0.001% of who we really are. So when you can sit underneath the tree, if you have that belief, with every cell you buy, but that's the thing. You can go, oh, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, but you're not. You're just saying it to convince yourself. But if you really sat in that, people have healed themselves of amazing things, of cancer, of tumors, of terminally illnesses. So it's just your belief. If you believe that's not true, that's why the placebo with those little pills, oh, this will heal me, and it does work. It's all about the belief, and we can, whoo, we can be heady. Yeah. We didn't even start where we were, but yeah, free will. 
And I don't know about free will. I'm not studied on it. I don't think we really know the truth on all of that until the day we die. Um, and that's like the great big mystery for me. But I'm going to be listening to my friend Sylvia to give her talk this coming week, see what she has to say about it. Not that she knows. I it don't all. even think we'll know whenever we die, to be honest. But we don't really die in what we said before when we transcend because we're all exactly. consciousness and the eye can't see itself. I don't think we're ever going to understand that we're a play in the imagination of an infinite intelligence that's how will we how will we ever ever know how does anybody know anything but if there's one thing that, that shifted was understanding the assumption and that's my free will is that I can that my understanding of it is is that I can choose to look in whatever direction I want to apparently yes. it's my choice but it, it appears like it's my choice the game is it's my choice so I will look in the direction so if I want if I want to look at this and choose this perception then that's where I'm going to go you know if ever you were on a um on, on, a, on a mountain bike coming down a mountain if you looked in the corner that you didn't want to go in you end up in the bloody corner you didn't want to go in <laughs> and you were going well, I don't want to go there hope I don't fall down there hope I don't fall down there and the bike would end up going that way so your consciousness is going to go wherever you're looking at and that's the only free will you've got after that creation is finished and you've set a new path and that path is going to be done because of where you're actually looking and one of the things I really really realized was is that I used to even write my affirmations to get well, if I write that I am healthy, I am healthy, I am healthy, then I'm trying to get health. Well, that yeah. in itself is actually screaming to the universe, I'm not healthy. So Absolutely. the assumption is there's nothing I can do to be healthy because I am, period. Detach, drop like a hot potato and go through your day in that feeling of there's oh what's the saying from the um from the zen masters isn't it when there's when, when you do 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 there's always more to do yes when there's nothing to be done when there's nothing to do then there's nothing left to be done and it's like the the difference in the vibration one is like when is it happening the next one is it's already done space and, and peace that's the law of assumption is I think for the first time, I finally had a penny drop moment. About I have it right up here. I have one good one quote I'll end on, but I just want to say, I agree with you. That's what I've always said to people, you know, when I coach, it's like, yeah, if you're skiing the trees, you look where you want to go. Cause if you look at the tree, you're going to go right into it. So you watch the path that you want in those trees for sure. So exactly. This is the quote. I don't know where I got it. Probably in um, Neville Goddard there, but willingly identify yourself with that, which you most desire knowing it will find expression through you wield to the feeling of the wish fulfilled and be consumed as its victim and then rise as the prophet of the law of assumption it's already yours you wouldn't want it you have to get into that vibration any of you that are listening we're doing a really long one today we're going in circles anything you truly <laughs> want can be yours. you just have to see it as that you're in it it's yours so I love I don't know. You said. I know how we got to free will to this, but here we are. <laughs> I love what you said, and I will, I will finish on that. Identify as. And then you also said the victim of it. And it's like, wow, that's a surrender. Okay, okay. So this is happening anyway. But um, one big quote. Um, You've got free will in choosing your assumptions, but no power to determine conditions and events. And I'll leave that because that's wide open again. I'm going to leave it with that one because we could carry on talking forever. All right. Have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Okie dokie. Have a good day now. See ya.